India has crossed the magical growth target of 7% and surpassed its own expectations. Can you believe it? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I am your host for the evening and my name is Ayush Sanghi. I welcome all of you to study IQIS. We are discussing an extremely important issue and the issue is that India exceeded its own expectations of 7% growth rate by achieving 7.2% growth rate. So let's have a look. Before that, I'd like you to subscribe to my Telegram handle by the name of Ayush Sanghi's IS Academy. Do look me up on Telegram and for all the PDFs, subscribe to my Telegram handle. Other than this, Insta and Twitter, you will find a lot of value added content. So I'd like to make you aware of Study IQ IS exclusive batch and the name of the batch is Prelims to Interview Exclusive English Batch. We will cover the entire syllabus of prelims as well as mains, which we call as the GS Foundation. Along with that, we'll be doing the crash course for prelims, which we call as the SIP batch. And along with that, mains answer writing practice and prelims test series. Along with all these things, you will get a mentorship service available after the classes are over, up till your examination, so that you do not feel left out. And when you qualify the mains examination, we are there with you to provide you with the personality test preparation session. All of these things are available at an extremely affordable cost, which is only 30,000 rupees if you use my code. So my code is Sanghi Live and the batch starts on 19th of June at 6 p.m. All the students who are preparing for 2024, go nowhere else and do subscribe to this channel if you want to clear to this examination. So let's come and observe what has happened. This gentleman over here, his name is Brent or Borge Brent, who is the chairperson or the top honcho, you can say the president of the World Economic Forum. What has he stated? That India's trajectory of growth is snowballing. It is snowballing and it will surpass everyone's expectations across the globe. And this is true. It is expected to clog the highest growth rate among the world's biggest economies like America, Germany, France, Singapore, all the economies it is expected to surpass and the country's economy is witnessing the snowball effect. What do we mean by the snowball, snowball effect? Let's have a look. Snowball effect means that when there is an avalanche, avalanche you understand, on a snow-capped mountain there is a small ball of snow that starts falling. And when it keeps falling, more and more snow adds up and that ball keeps becoming big. So it becomes a snowball effect, a larger effect. As it keeps coming down, the effect is huge. That is called as a snowball effect. It gets bigger and gathering more and more snow around its core. And that is what is happening with the Indian economy. Let me show it to you with the help of a diagram. So this is called a snowball effect. So it comes right from here. It's a small ball of snow. It keeps rolling down, rolling down, rolling down, it becomes this big. This is called the snowball effect. Huge snowball effect is what India is witnessing. And it's not just one person, the World Economic Forum head. It's people across the globe, are the top I banks, investment banks, and the consulting firms like Morgan Stanley. They state that India will be the third largest economy by 2027. Along with that, McKinsey's CEO, Bob Sternfels, believes it's not just India's decade, but this is India's century which we are living in. So we are blessed to have experienced this kind of growth in this scenario in India. I hope you are feeling proud of it as we talk about it. Yes. So now the concept is that what are the reasons for the snowball effect in India? How is it snowballing and what is the effect? What are the reasons behind it? Let's have a look. What are the reasons behind it? The first reason is India's population. This is an extremely big reason. It's a very relevant reason. India's growing population, massively growing population. We are the youngest country in the world having the largest number of young people across the world. So the demography is actually our strength. Followed by that, the second thing is huge infrastructure. The infrastructure that we are investing in. 
we are investing in good amount of money in infrastructure we have increased our allocation in our gdp towards infrastructural growth and this is benefiting us huge time big time so india is known for its distribution in social welfare schemes subsidies in social welfare schemes and this is something that has let us expand our growth and this is the truth now what we have done is that we have better targeted our subsidies we have better targeted our social welfare schemes and subsidies all these reasons are primary reasons why india is experiencing a snowball effect amidst certain other reasons like led the less red tapeism good ease of doing business so these are the primary three reasons we will elaborate on these reasons stating how has it witnessed a snowball effect so as we discussed the working population followed by infrastructure and distribution of welfare subsidies the other reasons are reforms which have led to less red tape red tape is less which means that you don't have any bureaucratic hurdles you don't have excessive paperwork better climate for investments now india is attracting because of ease of doing business because of let's say one nation one tax the gst reform the largest taxation reform independent india has ever seen and lastly what is driving growth is the digitization the digital revolution is really happening in india it is so let's elaborate on these points as we discussed india has the largest youngest population across the world and most of that population is young it is it is experiencing to it is wanting to experience work the majority of that population lies in the age group of 15 to 35 primarily most of them are between 15 to 25 so 70% of the population is in the working age group of 15 to 64 yes and because of that there will be fewer dependent people in the country as a proportion of this working age population there are fewer dependent people like japan most of those are dependent china most of those are dependent india most of those are independent this is what is adding now let me tell you the problem over here the problem is that just having the large top population or having the largest youngest population does not solve the problem you have to make them do the work if you do not do the work it is of no use so larger part of the population can spend and drive consumption growth in the economy yes it does also with the growth of nuclear families nuclear families means a family of 2 3 4 so there are no joint families the children of these families migrating to bigger cities for work it could spur urban consumption it does so all these metro cities hyderabad bangalore chennai bombay navi mumbai delhi gurgaon all these have become these huge companies so demand for housing and vehicles will increase too because you will consume if you come to an urban area you live in a house you require everything that is required for survival and hence it is being done so this is a huge benefit but it has its own challenges if you don't drive them to work if they don't work then that is useless they are not a dividend they are a burden to indian economy the second thing is infrastructure big time now you will be surprised to know that india used to spend approximately 0.3 to 0.4% of its gdp on infrastructural growth as compared to today cut to today now we are spending five times 1.5% of our gdp in growth or in infrastructural development and look at the gdp now and the gdp two decades back how was how big was it so in comparison to 0.3% now it's up to over 1.5% the end result is dedicated freight rail corridor so earlier we had passenger cars freight cars both running on the same track now there are dedicated track now freight car does not have to stop at every station it has to move straight and this is being provided by dedicated freight rail corridors it can cut the time taken for transporting goods from delhi to mumbai by 50% and this is what mr nitin gadkari are a uh, transport minister is undertaking these jobs express ways are, are being built and building highways and roads i'll show you how effective express ways express ways are being built we have taken examples and figures over here have a look so bharat mala project is the largest project that india has ever undertaken to build roads thousands of kilometers of roads are being built and it's to contribute significantly towards new india construction of national highways from 2013 14 to 21 22 in eight years we were 6.29 kilometers a day this is what we 
used to build and it has increased to 10.65 kilometers a day a whopping jump of almost 69% in less than 10 years then number of districts connected by four or more lane highways increased from 300 to 500 so districts that are connected in totality we have 700 districts earlier there were 300 that were connected now there are 500 freight carriage on national highways increased from 40% to 80% so, under the Bharat Mala project, connectivity of India is improving manifold. We have reached to the level of 10.65 kilometers a day. Look at these expressways, Purvanchal, Agra Lucknow, Bundelkhand, Trans Haryana Expressway. Let me show you the figures. Look at this map. So, when we talk about these things, when we talk about certain connectivity, so right from Ludhiana, look at the connectivity that has been done all the way to West Bengal, Dankuni. Look at this green line. These are expressways. Look at the blue line. Look at purple line. Look at the red line. Look at this line. So these are railway tracks and expressways. Why are these being made? For better transportation of freight, of passengers. So dedicated freight corridors would result into higher growth because they would result into better movement of freight from one place to the other. And in totality, this is what we have done in the West. East, East, West, North, South, East, Southern, totality 8300 kilometers. This is the level we have achieved and all these are operational up to a certain level. Like for example, Delhi Jaipur Highway was inaugurated a while back by the transport minister. This is what they are trying to achieve. This is what they are trying to do and this is what would put India on the world map in terms of effective roads. And let me tell you, I have traveled on American roads. American roads are in a mess. They were built 40, 50 years back and they haven't been renovated since. This is what has happened. Now, let me give you another fact. You'll be surprised. More than 100, 102 critical projects under the Gati Shakti, PM Gati Shakti Yojana, which was earlier called the National Infrastructure Pipeline, which has a budget of over 100 lakh crores, is nearly $8 billion are to be completed by 2024. Now, what happens when these things um, are put into place, when these highways are made, when this infrastructure is made, these high rise are made, what happens? What does it lead to? Let me explain it to you. So when you are investing this much money, you are creating an in intense amount, an incense amount of jobs. You are creating those huge millions and millions of jobs. Why? You are creating those jobs by spending money in order to build something. It would require people, it would require workers, it would require the, uh, the, the labor class to be able to employ it. Then you need material, you need cement, you need bricks, you need hundreds of things. So it would let the other factories run from whom you purchase, from whom you procure. That would result into a huge infrastructural development. It's a big benefit, it's a boon if you actually are able to capitalize on it. Then on this basis, you have to make sure that infrastructure expands and it's actually of use. It has to be good quality infrastructure. It is not supposed to be poor infra infrastructure like the bridge in Bihar that fell 2000 crore rupees down the drain. Are you getting the point? So this is the second benefit. And lastly, we have to target our social welfare schemes properly. So distribution of welfare subsidies, back in 2012, the finance minister Pranam Mukherjee had said, I lose my sleep, not when I I'm not able to do, not when I distribute subsidies, but I lose my sleep if those subsidies do not reach the intended people, if they don't go to the targeted group. Obviously, it is meant for a poor person. And those subsidies, while up away in corruption, while the poor people keep languishing, obviously, your heart pains, your heart bleeds if you look at all these things. Situation is much worse when we talk, when we talk about these things in terms of subsidies, but now things have turned a little better. So they are plugged with the help of Aadhaar card and the direct benefit transfer. Now you transfer the money directly into the bank account of the beneficiary. For that, you, you required bank account, which has happened through Jandan Yojana. So apparently $27 billion by preventing leaks in the system, this much money has been saved off the public exchequer. This is your money. This is taxpayers' money. We have saved this kind of money because of transparency, because of use of technology. Digital India ecosystem plucked $27 billion in subsidy leakage. Ajay State, the Secretary of Department of Economic Affairs, have actually stated. What else have we done on infrastructural development? We have electrified villages. Electrification of villages have been done to the tune of 600,000. We have made broadband connections available from 61 million to 816 million villages. It will give a boost to productivity. This is all what we have done.
So these are the good things that we have achieved, but these don't come without their challenges. What are the challenges that are, that are actually in this particular thing? What are the challenges? As I state, as I stated earlier, that you have so many people. If those people's energies are not put to right use, if they are not skilled, if they are not educated, if there are not enough job opportunities for them, then it is useless. So better jobs, we need better jobs. Just having demographic dividend doesn't work. A young population is not a guarantee for rising consumption. You have to provide them, you have to generate high quality jobs too. This is usually beneficial. And that has been something of a struggle for the country. So International Labour Organization says that the unemployment rate for those with either a bachelor's degree or a higher is staggering 15% in India. This is what we see, the unemployment rate. And these are the figures which are stated by an international organization. Are you getting the point? Huge. We are used to providing subsidies, social welfare, better targeting, it is good. But that better targeting leads to higher expenditure and higher expenditure leads to deficit, budget deficit. It leads to, uh, uh, it leads to deficits in terms of revenue account, revenue deficit, budget deficit, the current account deficit, capital deficit. We are spending on infra. We might need more. And in fact, the government thinks we need to splurge at least one and a half trillion dollars in this next decade. Where do we get this money from? This is not the kind of budgets that we have. What is the size of our economy? It is three and a half billion and we require 1500 billion. 1.5 trillion means 1500 billion. We need five times money. Where do we get that money? So, but the problem is that all the money might just be there to make up deficits, losses or whatever we fail to build. So, just like now US is in a fix. US owes 31 trillion dollars to different institutions across the world. The debt that had has piled up over the last 50, 60, God knows how many years. The same problem would be there, would be there with India. Are you getting the point? Huge. So this is a challenge. Investment, despite everyone talking about this being India's moment, but the FDI has actually dropped by 22% in financial year 23. You might have heard that US has increased the interest rates, which is why people are investing in the US. They're not coming to India. So FDI has dropped. Even though private investments from companies are being announced, we need to see how it translates on ground reality. We don't know. We are getting FDI consumption, but it is not translating into something or it is not translating, translating into things which we expected them to translate into. So these are the problems that we are facing. So as we discussed, there are benefits not without challenges. Challenges are there. And finally, when we talk about consumption, Consumption would only increase. Consumption depends on spending power. Spending power depends on employment. Employment depends on people being skilled. People being skilled depends on those services being provided to them. Only then consumption would increase. Consumption simply depends on money. You have money, you will consume. You don't have money, you will languish. You will die hungry. So growth is driven by domestic consumption. Domestic consumption is not enough. We need international consumption. We need to rise in exports. Since a large part of the economy is heavily dependent on agriculture for jobs, we are facing what kind of problems? We are facing heat waves. We are facing um, uh, monsoons in different seasons. We had the entire we had uh, monsoons in March. We had rains in April. So the entire rabi crop, entire kharif crop, it went for a toss. Climate change and issues like heat and water stress could have dampened rural incomes. So we need these people to come out of agriculture and do something else. Are you getting the point? This is a huge problem. So looking at the challenges and looking at the benefits, let's look at what we have achieved, the brighter side of the coin. The brighter side is we have surpassed our expectations. Those were fixed at 7%. We have surpassed it to 7.2% after a strong quarter four. So Indian economy grew at 7.2% in financial year 22-23 and the projection of government has been shied. The sharp upside of GDP growth suggests the resilience of the Indian economy despite global slowdown, which is a huge benefit. It is an unexpected growth that we have, and this is hugely beneficial. So the unexpected upside in GDP numbers is the result of what? Improvement in domestic drivers. So domestic drivers of private consumption, public consumption, and investment. All these things have happened, which is why we have improved. Simple. Why have we grown? We have grown. Growth means what? Increase in national income. Increase in national income means people have earned. How have people earned? Because there is investment, because there is consumption, because there are jobs and powered by services, exports and agriculture. All these things have led to this kind of a development. So in pandemic, we took a massive hit because there was a lockdown. There was no consumption. So this is 2009, 2021. This year, we took a massive hit where we 
happened to grow at a negative rate, which means that we were falling in economy. But when we started to recover, we recovered big time. We recovered where our growth went to almost 9%. Then it has come to 7.2%, which is above to what India had estimated. And these are the projections which are real. I hope you have liked the video. And please do comment and tell me that you'd like to see more videos on which kind of topic. Right? So as I told you, that study IQIS has come up with its new batch for English medium aspirants. This is called the prelims to interview batch, which has all the features with respect to an IS course. The entire syllabus of prelims, entire syllabus of mains, crash course for prelims and mains, along with test series for prelims and mains. And when you clear mains, we'll provide you with a personality test development program. All these things are available for an extremely affordable price of 30,000 only if you use my code that is Sanghi Live. All the 2024 aspirants of English medium, you would be surprised that these kind of services are being given at a very affordable cost. So the batch starts on 19th of June at 6 p.m. Don't forget to subscribe. The link is given in the description section below. And if you want to download the PDFs, access to my Telegram handle, are you Sanghi's IS Academy? You'll find all the PDFs over here and follow me on various social media platforms for extreme value added content. That would be all for today. Thank you so much. Bye everyone. Take care and all the best.